All right, welcome everyone. Obi-Wan Kenobi here. Uh, today's video is going to cover the new Dobbins 701C. It's a new BFS rod by Dobbins. I'm also going to be comparing it to the tried and tested Dobbins 700C to see the differences, to see which rod is going to be for you. So if you want to see that, and also just some general BFS content, keep watching and also comment down below uh, what other information you want to see. So to set the conditions for this video, like I said, both rods are the both Dobbins rods. Uh, the reels on the, the 701, it's the Corrado BFS. The 700 has the SLX BFS. They're performance wise, the same exact reel. Uh, there's a couple of minor differences, biggest one being uh, cosmetic. So that's pretty much a wash as far as the, the comparisons. And both of these, they have seven pound Verivis fluorocarbon line. One has the Dead or Alive uh, fluorocarbon line, which is a little bit stiffer line. And then one has a, the Absolute MG, which is kind of like your all around line that you use for like crankbaits, jigs, you know, whatever. So there's very little differences between these two setups. So I'm gonna get them out. I'm mainly gonna be fishing the 701C. Uh, I will say right off the bat that um, the 701 does feel like a little bit more natural bass rod, uh, just because the biggest difference is the tip. So this is tubular graphite going all the way up the, the blank, all the way up through the tip versus the 700. One of its features is the, the solid tip. So it basically it's tubular graphite all the way up to here. And this is solid carbon. So that's gonna give you a little bit lighter response. So if you are going to be drop shotting, mainly you're trying to use a BFS reel, uh, the 700 might be a better option. You can get a little bit more of that visual bite than you would with the 701. 701 has a little bit more power. Like right now, this is a 132nd ounce, uh, this is a Jackson Igu jig, and this is a four inch Senko. So it's very typical what you would throw on a spinning, on a spinning reel. I mean, this thing just flies with BFS gear. Let me just... I know if you've been seeing any, any buzz around ICAST, you see all these rod companies nowadays, they're, they're talking about BFS, you know, bait finesse system, which I'm not gonna sit here and talk too much about it. I have other videos for that. I'll put that a playlist down below. So if you are new to BF, oh, there we go. That's a nice fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. So if you are new to BFS, oh, that is a hefty fish. I think there might be some wood over there too. That thing just hit it. Oh, that's, that feels like, that's, this, is, this is bass is nice. There are some pike in this lake, but that's a hefty fish. But I'll put a playlist down below um, just, just so you can, kind of get what my takes are on it. I've been doing it for over 10 years, I'd say. Yeah, oh, this is a nice fish. And this is the taper of the rod. You can see that it's, I mean, this is a hefty fish and the front, the, the front part is very, you know, it's obviously soft, so you can still get fight with bigger fish. I got a lot of backbone. My drag's fairly tight, not super tight. And this is a good size fish. It's not huge, but it's a good size fish. Probably I don't know, probably a 16 inch bass or so. Oh yeah, that thing's pretty hefty. Give me, oh, he had a little herpes on his mouth too. Don't go kissing other fish in the school. Yeah, he may have been caught earlier this year, I'm not sure. But, I mean, that's a, that's a healthy sized fish. I, I, I didn't weigh it, that's about, I don't know, probably a two and three quarter pound bass, pretty thick. Yeah, nice. Oh, that's a nice fish. Let's see how long that is, just for comparison's sake here. It's going to be hard for the camera to pick it up, just the angle I have this, but... Uh, about a 16-inch six, bass. Not... There he goes. Yeah, it's not the... It's not the biggest bass, but that was very controllable. I mean, with, especially when you're using a 7-pound fluorocarbon, which you want... Especially if you're around a little bit of cover. It's really hard to do a spinning reel. So that's what, for me, that's what initially drew me to BFS was, you know, bass fishing. I was really big into bass fishing. And then as I went down the rabbit hole of BFS, this was back in early 2010s, like probably 2011 or so, 2012. And um, that's where I get into the, the very ultralight side for like trout, panfish and stuff. But uh, definitely it's very functional for bass. Let me see here. Yeah, like just, just the accuracy that you can have. Just, ooh, ooh, I had, had something grab. Just the accuracy you can have with, you know, 
skipping underneath docks and stuff like that. And these rods are so light too that you can do a, like a backhand skip, just super easy. There we go. There you got him now. What is that? Another bass? A little bit smaller. And then you can just tighten up the drag and you can steer him away. That's another nice bass, dang. Ooh, come on. I'm gonna stay, just because there's buoys around here, I don't want to. Come here. Ah, I didn't want to lose my bait. There we go. I mean, that's another chunky bass. But that came, yeah, it came right off just skipping backhand underneath that dock. Ooh, that's one thing, these hooks are sticky, I can tell you that. Let me pull some line. There we go. Yeah, that's a chunky bass. They would have already spawned out. I mean, or maybe, maybe they're right around that time. I mean, right now it's, it's 77.9 degree water temp, which this lake is clear, it's deep, so it's not gonna heat up as fast as some of those, some of those reservoirs or shallower water. But, I mean, boat launch is right there. They caught a couple of nice fish. All right, so I, this isn't my first time using this rod. I've used it on a few different outings. I kind of just want to make the video a little more concise with the information. And I kind of just keep adding when I'm fishing, but um, I will say that there, is, there isn't a huge difference in overall power between the 701 and the 700. Um, I will put a video up above to the seven, a video I was using the 700. I was catching some mid, mid to smaller size bass, so you can kind of see the flex on that and such. I might use it in this video actually now that I'm thinking about it but definitely when you get to about here there is more there is more power in the 701 uh, just a little bit it's not going to be a huge difference you know you're, you're not going to lose sleep over picking one over the other the biggest difference here is the the 701 has a the tubular tip like I was talking about and what that's going to do it's going to the the tip's going to um, bend a little bit more naturally so it's going to it's going to be more like a like a I don't know just like a light like fast action spinning rod. Ooh, there's gotta be some big bluegills in this lake. I'm getting some electric, I mean, those are bluegill right there, but anyway, um, so that, like I said, the 701, the 700 with that solid tip is gonna be a little bit more of like a drop shot rod taper. Um, it does work nice. I have to use it, Ned rigs, little top waters, whatever. And although they're like a faster action rod, they still bend down quite a bit when there's pressure. So you can still protect it. You can use like light, light square bills and stuff and still protect those hooks in the line uh, because the rod does bend down quite a bit even though it is like a faster action rod. Oh this one, deep log pile, big deep log jam. I was actually coming over the logs when this fish, this is a nice fish. Not a huge fish, but good fish anyway. These are those areas, I mean, you can't really throw a drop shot in there. I mean, using a spinning reel, you have to use lighter line or you have to use braid. And sometimes with those extra fast, like drop shot rods with braid, you can rip. It's not bad for, you know, drop shots, but if you're in this heavy cover and you have to horse that fish out of there, having too fast of action rod, you're not gonna have enough give in your system and they can rip those light hooks out. So that's why it's good that this, this rod, like when you set the hook, it's like, you know, like a fast action. And then when the, that force, I mean, the fish is applying force, it gradually bends down the blank as you saw and is able to still cushion that, that light wire hook, but I still had the strong enough line and I was able to manage it with bait casting gear that I'm not having line twist issues or any of those other issues that a uh, fluorocarbon can give. You know, if you have like, you know, seven, eight pound fluorocarbon on a spinning reel, it's a little bit difficult to manage. Yeah, BFS fishing was kind of just like a underground cult type thing, if you want to call it that, for the longest time. And now it seems like the last couple of years, but especially this year with all these eye cast announcements. Oh God, speaking of eye cast announcements. 
Um, it's not as big, but it's still a nice fish. Um, it seems like a lot of these rod companies are coming out with rods, you know, like, oh, BFS, you know, this BFS rod, which I'm not saying they're bad rods by any means. I mean, Dobbins had this, the Sierra series for a couple years now, which has been a good rod, and I think that innovation is good, you know, all this buzz that people are talking about BFS, which, do I feel a little salty of it just because I've been doing BFS before is cool? You know, like I'm some West Coast hipster. Yeah, sure, a little bit, but uh, it is going to be good because you're going to get a lot, of, a lot more competition for rods and also available in the U.S. as well. Like Bay Finesse Empire imports some BFS rods and also sells these Dobbins rods. But now that, oh, that, that's a pretty nice fish. And they're all fat still, too. Oh, come on. Look at that Senko way up its mouth. And we got a little busted up nose there. Yeah, that was a fun fish. And it's not a huge fish, but it's still fun on this rod. And I mean, I've caught bigger fish with this rod and it still handles it too. So you're able to still, you know, have your cake and eat it too almost. You can have the fun side of finesse fishing, but also if you hook into a big one, even around a dock or something, you still have enough control to decisively bring that fish in. Yeah, this Senko has seen some, seen some things, you know. Pop that back over. Yeah, these Jackson Egu jigs, these, these are, they don't look like a typical wacky jig just because it's a straighter shanked hook. It's not, um, it's not as round as, you know, like a, a normal wacky rig hook, but it still sticks them really good. And you can actually use these things for, for shaky heads or whatever, They're really versatile. I don't keep picking around these log piles until I can't no more, I guess. As, as far as reels, uh, for BFS reels, it's pretty, like the Crado BFS is like, I'd say the most legit BFS reel that's available in the U.S. market. Now, a lot of my reels I import from digitaka.com. Uh, like the SLX is basically the same as this, which is a little bit less expensive. And there's a, a bigger variety of BFS reels. Like Daiwa has a lot. They don't have any in the U.S. market now, but they have some over in Japan. That's it's They're actually, there's different price points to them too, but you're get, definitely going to want to get a BFS reel that's capable of casting what you're trying to cast. Now, you don't have to sit there and upgrade every component of it to be able to cast just like, you know, if you throw shaky heads, most out of the box BFS reels are gonna be able to do that just fine. All right, so overall, I think this rod is worth picking up, especially if, you know, like you're new to BFS, or even if you've been at BFS for a long time, like this rod is in my lineup, the 700C is in my lineup too. It's really good, especially, you know, if you're, if you're looking to kind of get that borderline, you like the drop shot, some you like these Ned rigs, wacky rigs, you know, Jico rig, whatever new rigs that are out nowadays that you do is a spinning gear, you can use that with bait casting gear and get a lot of that functionality of not having a line twist and such. And this rod does a really good job of being a bass rod and not just being a, a flimsy noodle that you can have fun, you know, pond hopping with, which is, those types of rods are good in their own right. But if you're looking for a functional bass tool, I'd say the Dobbin Sierra series definitely checks a lot of boxes for me. It's price right, it's still sensitive, uh, it handles small fish with fun, but also if you have bigger fish, you can still uh, bring those fish in with some authority. I'm not saying you're gonna skim them across the top of the water, maybe if you're using a little bit heavier line, but I've never had an issue feeling I was, I was um, underpowered for even some of the, the fish I caught today. I've caught bigger fish on the 700. See, I caught some big pike, which is, you know, you gotta play the game, of course, but I never felt I was gonna break the rod or anything like that, so. Um, definitely recommend, this is the Dobbin Sierra Series 701. If you're looking to do a little bit more just uh, drop shotting, I'd suggest going with the 700C. But there is a lot of overlap between, between the two rods. So don't let, you know, don't let the comment section hang you up of, you know, whether you should get the 701 or the, or the 700. They're both very similar. I'd go with the 701, especially if you're gonna be going a little bit heavier bass uh, tactics. So, if you like these types of videos, keep watching and I will be uh, releasing some other BFS content. So comment down below what you'd want to see. Thanks for watching.